Oh, you didn't think I could pass up that opportunity. I had to cash in on that song based on tonight's title, Radioactive. Um, so we're going to work on some more exponential modeling, and we're going to focus on a special theme. Um, we, we, we focused on things like Newton's Law of Cooling and other financial themes where money was compounded continuously or uh, with uh, some other frequency. Tonight's special theme is going to be radioactive substances. And, and what this is going to really be based off is this idea of half-lives. And the way that a half-life works, as described here, um, it says the amount of radioactive material, A, compared to the original amount, A sub O, or any quantity which is proportional to A. Now, that's a lot of goofy jargon right there, so let's see if we could um, explain that in English. Uh, basically, we have some initial amount, so let's throw a number on that bear. Maybe like, we'll say there's 100 grams of some substance. Well, depending on what its half-life is... Um, you're then going to drop to 50 grams, and then 25 grams, and then 12.5 grams, etc., etc., where the amount of that radioactive substance keeps getting cut in half over a certain amount of time, depending on what the half-life is for that substance. Real quick review of some of our basics here before we get into some detailed exponential decay problems. If a certain quantity doubles, what percent did it increase by? We're going to say that it increased by... 100%, okay? And by the time we move the decimal twice, you know, it's going to be 1.00 down the road. Now, what if a quantity triples? Any guesses? We'd say that the quantity increased by 200%. And then by the time we end up moving the decimal twice, it, it's eventually going to become 2.00, okay? And the last one here, if a quantity gets cut in half, okay, what percent did it decrease by? We're going to say it decreased by, any guesses? Yeah, 50%. So that one's not bad. And eventually, like we know, we're going to move the decimal twice, and it's going to end up being 0 0.50. We've actually written um, some exponential equations to model these following scenarios before, but we're just going to talk about it in a little different light that's going to set us up uh, for tonight. Um, so we've got a certain population, and I'll use P of T for population. Um, initial population was 100, and they said it's going to double every six years. Okay, so I've got t divided by 6 to represent every 6 years as opposed to every single year. Now, this idea of doubling, we said it's going to increase by 100%, right? So, in anything that's growth, I'm thinking my base is going to be 1 plus r. So, I'm thinking 1 plus, and then I move the decimal twice, 1.00. So, really, p of t in this case is going to be 100 times 2, which is being raised to the t divided by 6. So, that's really where the 2 comes from. Earlier, we just said, well, if it doubles, we put a 2 here. We didn't really get into detail about why it's a 2 other than just doubling. But it's really, it's because it's 1 plus 100%, and that's where the 2 comes from. Okay, so what if we've got the, we're saying the number of plastic bottles gets, that gets recycled is tripling every 5 years. So I'll use R of T for recycle. And we don't know the initial amount, so I'll just put A sub O right there. And it's tripling, so it's really 1 plus 200% or 2.00, raised to the t divided by 5. And that's where this 3 ends up coming from, because 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. And like I said earlier, we just said, well, if it triples, we're just going to throw a 3 here. And we said, you know, we didn't really go into detail why or where the 3 came from. Okay, uh, don't be afraid to try this one on your own. We'll see if we come up with the same thing. The number of concussions was cut in half every 3 years. So we'll say capital C for concussions. Um, we'll use like A sub O to represent the initial amount. They didn't really tell us. And I'm thinking 1 minus 0 0.50. And of course, uh, this one was getting cut in half, so it decreased. T divided by 3. Or in other words, C of T equals A sub O 0.5 raised to the T divided by 3. Okay, the number of new build houses. I'll go with H of T for houses. Increases 4% every two years. Initial value, and it's increasing by 4%, so I'm going to go 1.04 raised to the t divided by 2. And I think I got one more here. The attendance at a particular theme park, for whatever reason, is decreasing by 15% every three years. And so I'll use A for attendance, the initial attendance, and we're going to go 1 minus 0.15 raised to the t divided by 3. So I bet you feel pretty comfortable with those rascals, and that's going to put us in a good position as we move forward here tonight. 
All right, so let's introduce us to this idea that uh, radioactive substances have what's called a half-life. And here's one particular example. And there's going to be some, we're going to see some weird elements tonight. But they said there's a radioactive isotope called Seaborgium-266. And this particular substance has a half-life of 30 seconds. What we're saying here is every 30 seconds, half of this isotope has basically vanished, okay? In a particular sample, an initial mass of 400 grams, uh, we want to complete the following table. So we said initially there's 400 grams. So at t equals zero, and I'm using capital A to represent amount, we'd have an amount of 400 grams. 30 seconds later, half of that's gone. So we're now down to 200 grams, okay? Another 30 seconds later, half of it's gone. So as far as what's missing here is, I'd, I would say this is 60 seconds or one minute has elapsed and we're down to 100 grams. 30 seconds after that, we'd be down to 50 grams. Okay, I think you see the pattern here. Now, uh, 30 seconds after that, we'd be down to 25 grams. And 30 seconds later, we'd be down to 12.5, so that's gonna put us at 150 seconds or about two and a half minutes. Okay, I got a real live monster here for you to dive into. So I want to introduce you to a particular isotope called titanium-44. It's a radioactive isotope such that every 63 years, um, its mass decreases by half. In other words, we're saying that the half-life of this isotope is 63 years. For a sample of titanium-44 with an initial mass of 100 grams, write a function that will give the mass of the sample remaining after any amount of time. Again, the whole idea of a half-life is that um, the substance is decreasing by 50% each year. That's how you could define half, decreasing by 50% each year. Or I should say, in this case, every 63 years. So my function is going to look like this. A of t equals my initial mass. And let's see, I'm thinking 1 minus 0.5, because it decreased 50%, to the t divided by 63. And of course, we could simplify this rascal right here to just 0.5. They also want me to, to define all variables, and I'm going to define, let's see, I'll use a different color, lowercase t is the amount of time in years, so the time that has passed in years, okay? The other variable in play is capital A of t, and that's going to be what we call the amount of titanium-44 remaining after t years. The amount of titanium, let's see if I can squeeze this in, hyphen, 44 remaining after t years. I try to be very thorough and detailed there with that definition. All right, that was the easy part. Now it's going to get a little more challenging. Scientists sometimes use the average yearly decrease in mass for estimation purposes. Use the average yearly decrease in mass of the sample between year 0 and year 10 to predict the amount of the sample that's remaining 40 years from now. Round your answer to the nearest tenth. So I think right off the bat, th this whole idea of average yearly decrease reminds me of average rate of change. And so what I'm thinking is, and we're going from year 0 to year 10, so my setup looks like this, a of 10 minus a of 0 all over 10 minus 0. And what I'm doing in order to evaluate a of 10 is I'm substituting the 10 back into the function we just created in part a. And as we test that on our, you know, and I'm using my calculator to help me out, I got 89.58132. Um, let's see, and I evaluate a of 0, and that simply should give me 100, and it does, because that's the initial amount at t equals 0. And as I divided those, I ended up with negative 1.041868. Now I want to talk about the units. This is going to be grams per year. On average, between year 0 and year 10, they lost about 1.041868 grams per year. And again, because this is grams here, and then we divided that by 10 years, and that's where the grams per year comes from. So, I guess the question now is, over the course of 40 years, how much have you actually lost if on average you're losing 1.04 grams per year? So what I did is I multiplied the 40 times negative 1.041868 to find out, get an estimation of how much I've lost. 
and that gave me about negative 41.674.72 grams. And again, this number represents how many grams I've lost over that 40 year time span. So ultimately the question is how many, how much do you still have left, right? Now remember we started with 100 initially. So if I'm thinking I started with 100 and I've lost about 41.67472 grams, I'm now sitting with about 58.3 grams that I still have remaining. And again, that's an approximation of 40 years. We're just estimating, okay? Now, of course, you can see where that's taking us. We got to part C and they say, well, is the actual mass greater than or less than our estimated amount after 40 years? Now, to get the actual amount after 40 years, we're going to evaluate A of 40, right? And if we plug it into the formula we had created earlier, that's going to be 40 divided by 63, because the half-life was 63. That's what we had in our formula. And as I evaluated that on my calculator, I got, let's see, 64.3976 grams is what I have remaining. And so I think it's very clear that the actual amount is greater than the estimated amount after 40 years. To me, here's a really fun, quick question. I got, and I got two mini questions here for you. First of all, what's the initial amount? Assuming that this particular graph represents the amount of a particular radioactive substance after um, T years. So we'll say this is a uh, lowercase t down here. And he, this one, in this case, is measured in years. And uh, this is the amount of substance we still have measured in grams. So what is the initial amount? Well, that's going to be your y-intercept every time. And we could throw that in our notebook. It's going to be the y-intercept, which in this case is just 80. Okay, and we'll put a little g there for grams, 80 grams. Now, how long is the half-life? Well, let's see. We started with 80, and the question is, when did we hit 40? We hit 40 right about there, and that corresponds to the 20 here. So I'd say the half-life is about 20 years. And what you'll see, that you'll see that pattern can com continue to perpetuate itself. Um, another 20 years later, the grams dropped from 40 to 20. Another 20 years later, the grams dropped from 20 to 10. 20 years later, they dropped from 10 to 5. And you see the, the amount just keep getting cut in half continuously. Well, our last question for the night doesn't exactly involve radioactive decay, um, but it is kind of closely related, and it follows our theme of exponential modeling, fortunately. And so we said, uh, Doug drank a cup of coffee hopefully from Tim Hortons, and uh, let's see, it had 130 milligrams of caffeine. Each hour, the amount of caffeine in Doug's body diminishes by about 12%, okay? So this whole idea, you know, whenever something diminishes by a percentage, that, that's a tip or that's a cue to us that we're talking about exponential decay. Okay, write a formula to model, that's our buzzword here, model, the amount of caffeine that remains in Doug's system after each hour. So I'm thinking, let's use A of T for amount. We could use C of T to represent caffeine either way. Now, we initially had 130 milligrams, and it's decreasing about 12% every, let's see, how often? Each hour. Okay, so it's just raised to the T power. We don't have to divide it by 3 or 4 or anything like that. And if we just clean that up a touch, let's see, we got 130, let's see, 0.88 raised to the T power. There we go. There's a nice function. Okay, part B. How long will it take for the level of caffeine in Doug's system to drop below 30 milligrams? And I'm going to substitute that bear for A of T because that's the amount. And I'm thinking 30 is equal to 130 times 0.88 raised to the T power. And it's my job to solve for T. So I'm going to divide both sides by 130. I could turn that into a decimal, but I'd rather just simplify it as a fraction here. And I got 3 thirteenths equals 0.88 raised to the t power. And here's where I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. Okay? And that allows me to move this exponent out in front of that log. So let's just take a moment to rewrite this and make it look a little cleaner. We've got the natural log of 3 thirteenths equals t multiplied by the natural log of 0.88. Taking advantage of those natural log properties, 
And last but not least, I'm going to divide both sides by the natural log of 0.88. And I'm going to be real careful as I plug this into my calculator to close the parentheses when appropriate. We've gotten, to, gotten ourselves in some hot water a couple of times and uh, it's throwing us off track. And as I evaluate this on my calculator, I'm simply getting T equals 11.471 hours. Okay. Now, do you ever wonder how many, if we could convert that to minutes? Um, so this is 11 hours in how many minutes, right? Let's see if we can go down that road and entertain this idea. It's 11 hours, but how many minutes involved here, right? Well, what I do is I take that 0 .471 and I multiply it by 60 because, there's, of course, there's 60 minutes in an hour. And that gave me about 28. So just, just like you'd expect, just shy of a half hour. Of course, if this number right here was a 0 .5, you'd expect to get 30 minutes. So if this is a little smaller than 0 .5, we got a little less than 30 minutes. So let's say we've got 11 hours and 28 minutes, okay, before the amount of caffeine in Doug's body or Doug's system drops below 30 milligrams for the first time. All right. How about this? The amount of time... Let's see, I'm going to change my color here while I'm getting ready. Okay, the amount of time it takes for the body to metabolize half of a substance is called its half-life. To the nearest five minutes, how long is the half-life for Doug to metabolize caffeine? Now remember, he started off with initially 130 milligrams. So half of that would be about 65, right? All right. And let's see, 0.88 raised to the T power. We're going to divide both sides by 130. So it's very similar to the last problem. It's just we got a little different number to work with here. And I've got 1 half equals 0.88 raised to the T. We're going to swoop in and we're going to take the natural log of both sides. And that's going to allow me to move this exponent in front of that log right there. So we've got the natural log of 1 half equals T times the natural log of 0.88. I'm going to divide both sides by the natural log of 0.88. Again, we're going to then tap that calculator and let him take over right here. Natural log of 1 half, close my parentheses, divided by the natural log of 0.88, close that parentheses, gave me a T value of 5.422. All right. Now, again, that's in hours. And I want to convert that to hours and minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 0.422 and I'm going to multiply it by 60 again because there's 60 minutes in an hour. And that gave me about 25.32 minutes. And they wanted me to round to the nearest five minutes, which is kind of a weird thing. That's different than saying nearest minute, usually. That when they say nearest five minutes, you're thinking of in increments of five. Is it 20? Is it 25? Is it 30? And of course, this number is closer to 25 than either 20 or 30. So I'm going to say it's going to take, or the half-life of this caffeine in Doug's system anyways, 5 hours and 25 minutes. And of course that varies from person to person, but it's all very, very similar within, you know, give or take a few minutes of that. So uh, good luck tomorrow, and we'll have a worksheet ready to really tackle some more radioactive substances.